Welcome back. This is chapter two, 22, video number two. Let's look at exercise nine from page 520. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reported a survey of randomly selected Americans aged 65 and older, which found that 411 of 1,012 men and 535 of 1,062 women suffered from some form of arthritis. Are the assumptions and conditions necessary for inference satisfied? Explain. Well, yes. There was a random selection of sample members. Because each person was selected at random, the group of men is independent of the group of women. There, there, we, we didn't select couples, say. Um, it was just randomly selected individuals, so breaking them up into men and women, you're still, if each individual is independent of the other, then each group will be independent of each other. It is plausible that there are more than 10 times 1,012, 10,120 men age 65 and older, and 10 times 1,062, 10,620 women age 65 and older in America. We are constructing a confidence interval in initially, so when we check the um, success-failure condition, we'll just go ahead and use the observed number of successes and failures. There were 411 successes um, directly reported among men, and we can just do 1,012 minus 411 to get that there are 601 failures among men. There were 535 successes, and 1,062 minus 535 equals 527 failures reported among women. Thus, there are at least 10 successes and 10 failures observed among both groups. Now, had we started off with a hypothesis test in the next step, we would have calculated the pool pooled proportion um, for the whole group together, and then um, double check that we were expecting at least 10, uh, 10 successes among women, 10 failures among women, 10 successes among men, and 10 failures among men. We're going to create a 95% confidence interval for the difference in proportions of senior men and women who have the disease. So we can do that in our calculator. Uh, by going to our scratch pad and then statistics, confidence intervals, and choosing two proportion Z interval. And then you're going to be prompted for X1, N1, X2, and N2. Um, you can pick which group you want to be group 1, which to be group 2. I just did it in the order that they were listed. So the men are group 1 and the women are group 2. And you can see that I have their values in there. And you select your confidence level. We want the 0.95, so we should be good to go. You press OK, and then you get your results. And so, again, you're going to get a, the lower limit for your confidence interval and then your upper limit for your confidence interval. Okay, so we get negative 0.1402, comma, negative 0. 0. 0.0550. So negative 14.02%, negative 5.50%. Interpret your interval in this context. We are 95% confident based on these samples that the proportion of American men aged 65 and older who suffer from arthritis is between 5.5% and 14.0% less than the proportion of American women at the same age who suffer from arthritis. And so since it's negative there, uh, since the interval was negative, that's why we know it's less than. If there were uh, positive values, we'd be able to say greater than. Does this confidence interval suggest that arthritis is more likely to afflict women than men? Explain. Yes, the entire interval um, lies below zero, so it, it, that tells us that we um, have evidence that men are less likely to get it, which means that women are more likely to be afflicted by it. Let's confirm our findings with a hypothesis test for a difference in proportion of American male seniors and American female seniors who have arthritis. So I'm going to write, um, when I'm writing my null hypothesis, I'm going to write it as PM equals PW versus the alternative PM is not equal to PW where PM is the proportion of men 65 and older who have arthritis, and PW is the proportion of women 65 and older who have arthritis. And we're just testing for a difference. Okay, We're seeing if on either side if there's a difference. 
So we go to a two proportion test under stat test. So you're in your scratch pad, you got a menu, you do stat, you go to statistics, stat tests, two proportion Z test, and you put the same information in. You choose your alternative. We're going with the two sided. And so we've got our little two sided up there. And so we get a p value of 0 0.000008, and our z value is negative 4.46. So how do we interpret that? The probability of getting a result at least as extreme as the one we found in our example, if the null hypothesis is true, is 0 0.000008. So that's not very likely. So what that's telling us is we have an extremely unlikely result if the true proportion of men with arthritis equals the true proportion of women with arthritis. So due to our extremely small p-value, we reject the null hypothesis because it is just extremely unlikely we would get our results if the null hypothesis were true. We are surprised. We are surprised and we are rejecting the null hypothesis. There is, a statistically, there is statistically significant evidence that there is a difference in the proportions of all American men 65 and older with arthritis and all American women 65 or older with arthritis. Okay, guys, that's it. Um, come ready to do some rounds in class. I'll see you next time. Bye.